Today I'm going to go through the unboxing of the RC Surfer. Um, this is the what I received in the mail. I got this big box and then in a little package showed up. It's the extra motor and the extra propeller. I hope the extra items that I bought are actually inside this box. If not, given that I received this a couple of weeks ago, it'll probably be a problem uh, to try to get the things uh, delivered. But let's get started. Right now it's super windy. The water's not uh, ideal. So I will not be using this today. And the hope was to um, basically create the video and or the unboxing video and then get it put out at the same day that I got to try it out. But that will not be happening. Let's flip this around. Okay, so the first thing, uh, it looks like the Tolson Fish Finder. And there's the extra battery, that's good news. So far, so good. All right. So let's, box doesn't look like it's been banged up too bad. It's kind of crushed on this one end, but I have a feeling it's gonna be all right. We just gotta figure out how to get it open without tearing up the box too bad. Yeah, the box has definitely been crushed on one end. So hopefully there's no damage on the inside. It looks like it's pretty well packaged, so it should be okay. And let's slide it out. Oh, first time I've seen it. I am super stoked. Let's keep just working it off. All right, I am stoked. Instruction manual, a cool canvas carrying case. Super cool EDF stand. Piece of extra tape, assumed to protect these antennas. It looks like they used to be connected down. And let's go ahead and pull this out of the box. box. Oh, I love this CDF foam, by the way. This stuff makes the best Pompano floats you could imagine. One of my other videos, I use this stuff, something very like it, but when I get this kind of stuff in the packaging, I never throw it away. All right. Oh, we just dropped our charger, but it didn't get hurt. So before I do any more, let's make sure there's no more little parts that are gonna fall out. There's the battery that it came with. It's a 9.6 volt, 16.2 amp hour. That looks like it's finally empty. And there's more on this side. And that is my brand new remote controller. Nothing else in there. Let's pull that out. All right, the boat appears to be in good shape. Got a sticker torn up on one side a little bit, but it looks like that's just from where they forced the holes in there. Not exactly sure what these are yet, but we will figure that out shortly. But at first, pass it doesn't look like there's any no damage on it so for now i'm just going to sit that right there and put together the stand 
Let's see what all we have in here. All right, so I have not even begun to look at the instructions yet, but this appears that it's going to be all right to just sort of push this together. Because if I did get it wrong, it wouldn't be too hard to take back apart. And everything I've seen, people put these together and take them apart on a semi-regular basis. So I can't imagine that it's uh, gonna be problematic. By the way, I would love to get my hands on this stick foam. Whatever they made this from, that would be awesome. All right. Seems to be going together pretty well. Now the back end, or maybe that's the front end. Who knows? We'll know in a moment. All right. This is what I'm assuming. Maybe not. I think it goes like that. And there we have our fishing surfer unboxed. Let's see if it goes like so. Not really sure actually. That looks better. All right. So I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot just yet. One of the things that uh, I see the transducer is installed. So I have a feeling that uh, my fish finder is already installed, which would be really, really good news. But let's go ahead and open this thing up for the first time. And there we go. Everything seems to be looking good in there. Let me take this camera off. Just sort of peek around in there. All looks... Uh, where it should be. I don't see any cracks or errors or issues. Ah, so I just realized what these were. This right here is because something in here is water cooled. So I assume that's where the water comes in and goes out. Just had to restart the GoPro. I'm using two cameras today uh, to go through this process. That way I can get a couple of different views. If you've just started following me, you know I'm still getting this all figured out. Um, one thing I will not be doing uh, is running the boat today because I'm going to make sure that the batteries are nice and charged. Um, but right off the bat, it says this boat is not a toy and it's not intended for persons under 14 years of age. Believe me, that was a long time ago. It tells me not to overcharge the batteries and to switch the charger off when the red light turns green. So this will not be charged unattended. Uh, and not to leave it wet, only use the original chargers. Don't use it where people are swimming. Don't use where there are obstacles or plants. It's a whole bunch of do nots. And then basically it takes you through the process of uh, charging the batteries and putting them in the boat. And uh, telling me that the first thing is the GPS home coordinate, um, that it's vital to set this up and to coordinate before you drive your boat out to the ocean to release the bait and hook. The reason for that is if should something go wrong with this while it's out, um, the indication is that this turns around and comes back to where it launched from if you have set um, the home setting. So right now I'm stoked. I think this uh, front antenna is gonna be for my fish finder. These are for the GPS. And uh, we will go through each of those things uh, momentarily. Clean up after myself. So again, this is my extra battery. I went ahead and got two batteries. I also bought an extra in a motor and uh, prop 
but that's what this is. This is the extra battery that came with it. Um, where I plan on using this, um, I typically will be setting up four rods. Um, so I'd like to be able to get four rods set with it and bring it back. And from what I've heard, after about four or five trips, it's time to recharge. Another thing, uh, thanks to Smitty, uh, I will try to link to his YouTube page. Um, he's actually the guy that finally talked me into buying this, um, even though he doesn't realize it. But I watched all of his videos and uh, decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on this. If it doesn't work out for what I want, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the AquaCat. But for right now, I think this is going to do it. Um, but I will be taking his advice and basically spraying everything down um, with Corrosion X. Now, one thing I am noticing that I did not receive, unless they stuffed it inside this, um, I had ordered some of their oil um, and it did not arrive. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, oh, look. Oh, wait. Hey. All right, I'm actually, uh, this fish bump company is impressing me right off the bat. Um, first of all, uh, in today's age, something like this coming as far as it did, um, it doesn't surprise me when things are damaged. So far, all of this looks like it's in really good shape. Like I said, there was a little dent in the back in the box, but it was packed well. Um, but Fish Fun Company um, gave me a sticker, gave me a button, uh, gave me a card uh, for RC Fishing World for me to reach out to um, should I need help. But look at there. There's the oil that I was just talking about that I almost dropped. Um, and even instructions on where to put all of it. Um, so that's good, good news. And this is my fish finder. Now, I love this holder, by the way. Um, it's not in this video, but I bought a table uh, that I'll be uh, putting on my fish cart. If you follow my fish cart video, um, you'll know that I have a number of things uh, that are on there specifically for this type of thing. In fact, this will be going underneath on the lift kit um, from when I'm carrying it out. Um, in a follow-up unboxing video, I also purchased the Swell Pro. Um, so we'll be going through that. Um, but the cool thing about this is that I have added a mount uh, to my cart uh, specifically for um, this fish finder so that I will be able to mount it and have access to it um, without any problems. All right. Well, I've gone through the unboxing. Um, I am now going to, uh, I did want to get this on video in case it was something wonky. Uh, I wanted uh, the company to see me unboxing it for the very first time, but so far so good. And uh, now it's time uh, for me to actually spend some quality time with the instructions. And uh, we'll be back in just a few. By the way, by the time you see this video, there will be no time passed. Sun will probably be down or in a different uh, location, but right now um, everything looks fantastic. I uh, even sent me a free pompano rig. One thing about these pompano rigs, by the way, I mean, I appreciate it. I'm not complaining it was free. But if you get pompano rigs like that, you see that hook? I'm going to leave it sitting there for a second to give the camera because I can't see what's going on there. A chance to zoom in. Um, where I fish, we get a lot of smaller pompano. Um, in fact, I'll catch 10 baby pompanos for every one keeper pompano. And this particular shape hook, I don't know what this is. It's like a octopus slash circle hook of some kind. I'm not sure. Uh, but these hooks in particular have a tendency to come through the lip and right towards the eye of baby pompano. So I will not be using this, uh, but I will take all the hardware off of it. Um, and thank you for including it. All right, with that, we're going to wrap this video. And like I said, um, when you get to actually see this video, it will go from what you see here, this big pile of stuff. I'm going to read through the owner's manual, figure out all of the things I'm supposed to do. I'm going to get the batteries charged. Uh, I got a hot tub here that I'm going to test it in and make sure that there's no leaks. Um, and hopefully this wind will stop um, because when the wind stops, the ocean lays down and we will wrap this video with a test of it on the water. All right, we're back. 
different day. Sun's a little bit in my eyes today, but I want to get this knocked out. Um, I got the controller powered up. I have both batteries charged. I have the Tolson uh, charged up as well. I have also looked through uh, the instruction manual. So I know the things to do, to not to do. Um, I did figure out what these were for. These are for the coolant, um, so that's good. So we're gonna go ahead and open this back up because the first thing that I need to do is uh, reconnect the battery. Now, I am gonna turn this on first. Now, I don't know if that's the way that they, uh, this boat particularly wants to be, but in all my experience from an RC uh, perspective, it was always to have the controller turned on before you powered up the device. But we are going to do this for the very first time. I have used my Corrosion X on everything. I have oiled the props. Um, my first step here is just to make sure that nothing leaks um, before we do anything else. All right, we've got some beeps. Battery is in. I'm gonna strap it in place even though it's not really going anywhere tonight. should be on so it shows that uh, I'm gonna come out of the Sun a little bit here it shows that the transmitter is on the receiving is on GPS is currently connecting um, my battery indicator is across the top or across the bottom here um, and so far I don't see any issues in fact I just pulled the trigger a little bit and cannot see the props from there, but let's go ahead and put this back on now. And just for fun, I'm going to close it. I am also gonna power on the Tolson. And this is gonna take some getting used to. There's a knob that's a little bit hard to get to. Uh, so depending on how tall my table is on the beach, um, it's going to be interesting. But there is a nice color display. It is running and working. All right. So I'm going to hold it up. It gets significantly heavier with this battery in it. All right. Forward and reverse seems to work just fine. Um, I am going to, I tried to figure something out. This, you'll notice, is not staying locked down. Um, now, I was assuming it had to do with this control. So I'm going to turn this to B, and that's supposed to open it. C opens it all the way. I'm going to close it and hold it in place. And that seemed to do the trick. All right. Um, so that's good news. I was a little concerned. But uh, it seems to be nice and solidly in there. It's not coming out until I open it up. I am going to check the one on the bottom as well. All right, that opens both the hopper and the bottom, but you'll notice that this one is still in place. If I put that to C, it goes in. All right, close it and hold it in place. Yep, see, sometimes this doesn't work real well. And I'm, I'm not, a, not saying there's something wrong. I'm just saying that I haven't quite figured out how to do this yet. But sometimes it just pushes it right out instead of holds it in. So I'm going to try to hold it in a little tighter. And that seems to do the trick. So I'm not holding it in tight enough to break it. But I'm definitely having to uh, put some sturdy pressure on it. All right. So I've got my hot tub turned off. So this water is cool. We're going to put it in. So, forward and back on the throttle. Let's 
Seems to be working all right. Not planning on going anywhere with it. I just want to make sure that uh, we can get it in. So another thing I noticed is that the little coolers down here um, aren't quite spitting water out yet, but there they go. See, they are. You see that they are actually spitting water out. If I can get that to hold up. All right, let's turn on the LEDs. Uh, there we go. They are on. And I think so far we're in good shape. Everything appears to be working just fine. It has quite a bit of power, honestly. All right, so I'm gonna let it sit here for a few minutes and then uh, I wish I had the uh, courage to turn it upside down, but right now I don't. But it seems like something I should do, right? Uh, before I put it out in the ocean is I should uh, flop this thing around, so I'm going to. And uh, one cool thing is, is that it automatically re uh, writes itself. So in the almost guaranteed chance that it's gonna do some barrel rolls, while well, let's see. Um, I feel like I've, uh, I needed to test it, test it out. Uh, one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the bait boxes. I'm gonna let it really deal with what it's going to deal with um, before I pull it out of there and uh, let it uh, tell me if there's any leaks. All right, well, we don't have any fish in the hot tub and it uh, says that it's 0.2 meters deep. It's close. It's probably close to a full meter deep, but I'll tell you what's causing that problem is the seat. So if I push this out away so that that transducer can get over there, and there we go. It uh, looks like it's reading quite a bit better now. All right, a couple of things. I've got a spray bottle uh, with fresh water in it that I will be using um, to make sure that uh, all salt water is rinsed off of this. Um, I'm not going to push it under and hold it under because I don't think that'll ever actually happen um, under use. But I have uh, I have given it uh, a good little test. Nothing seems to be smoking yet. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and let it drain off. And uh, we're going to come back and see once I open it up if there were any leaks. All right. We are set. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a dry off, at least on the top and sides, to make sure that I don't uh, put any water in it before I run my test, or my look around, I shouldn't say it's not a test anymore, um, before I dig in there and see if there was any seepage at all. Um, I figured if there was seepage, it'd be easy enough to fix, and it would be better if it were fresh water instead of salt water. All right. So we're gonna open the clamshell again. Still a little bit of water. I will tell you one thing, the stickers, the stickers are not sticking on. I mean, I don't know if you can see this one here, but the stickers are just peeling off of this thing. Um, I've had it out of the box. This was day two. And it, that's the first time it's ever been wet right there in the hot tub, but the stickers are literally just peeling off. Um, no idea what's causing that, but honestly, if that's the worst thing that happens, I'm not concerned. All right, let's open her up. All right, you'll notice there was some little seepage around the inside, but nothing so far on the inside, right? But that's where your gasket is, and that's the part that I would be very careful to keep clean. In fact, you saw that I just sat that down on the table like that. Um, since we're gonna be using this on the beach. If you don't have some sort of table, something to keep this up off the sand and you set this in the sand, you're gonna get sand through this whole thing, which would be bad because that sand will break that seal. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the camera in there for you guys, but I do not see any water. I do see 
a little bit of my Corrosion X uh, rolling around in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera off and let you see in there. So I do see, if you look down in there, it does seem to be a little bit of the Corrosion X that's dripping in there, but I'm not worried about Corrosion X. I was mostly worried about those coolant lines, letting water drop in there. Um, one other thing that I'm doing by uh, giving you guys this good view is um, I'm making it to where I can really zoom in on my video in post before I put this thing out in the water. But I don't see any water in there, folks, and that's a really, really good sign as far as I am concerned. So, put my camera back on. One good thing about these DJI mounts is they uh, are easy to come on and off. All right, I'm gonna try to look at that camera. I don't know if you uh, if I need to be bending over, but um, my plan is Saturday morning uh, to take this out uh, to the calmest part of the ocean I know of, um, and that's out at Playa Linda. Now, we've probably had 10 days straight of wind, so the grass is gonna be bad. Uh, the water is gonna be murky, um, but I wanna get this in the water. So it's currently Wednesday, um, and Saturday morning I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna take it and uh, fish it. Uh, one thing I have not really figured out yet on my own, and I'm gonna have to test it out, is how to use this for a pompano rig. So a double drop loop, what's gonna be best for hooking things up and not getting them tangled um, while they're going out. I have seen a lot of videos. This thing can take a beating. It gets rolled around. So I don't want the hooks hanging out back. But if I put both hooks in the hopper, I'm worried about that they will get tangled together. Um, so uh, with any luck, I will figure out something and then you'll get to see that on video. And if you choose to go this route, um, hopefully that'll be helpful. So once again, um, that's all I'm gonna video for today. All right. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I am going to connect this and bind it um, from a GPS perspective. This our binding uh, the transmitter and receiver. Um, I didn't record doing this before, um, so I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, transmitter is off and uh, battery is not connected. Um, we're going to press and hold the STL button. And then we're gonna switch the transmitter, switch on the transmitter. Um, once we do this, the GPS is gonna flash like you saw it doing um, earlier. So you press and hold this, turn this on. You'll notice that the GPS is flashing, all right? Once that is flashing like so, we then come in and we connect the battery. And we have connected. We got our double beeps. We're in good shape. It's transmitting and it's receiving. So I wanted to uh, go ahead and record that because uh, I'd failed to record it before. But by the time you see this, this will happen before what happened before or during. Slightly before. Um, as far as you're concerned, you're going to see all this together. But now that I put all this commentary in there, um, you're likely going to know that I forgot to record what I meant, planned on recording um, unless I edit this out, at which point you'll never know any of this. One other thing. Hopefully you guys can see this card. Um, I've heard nothing but fantastic stuff about RC Fishing World. That's who I bought this boat from. I know that it was uh, created by Fun Fish Co. Um, or a Fish Fun Co. Um, but getting it ordered, getting it shipped, how it was packaged, the fact that everything I asked for was there the first time um, is really good news. So really want to make sure that I say thanks to them uh, for that and um, I'll, def I'll be putting a link um, in the description uh, to them. If you're going to buy one of these boats, highly recommend you go to RC Fishing World. Well, I'm here. Wind is still really blowing. Really hasn't stopped for a couple of weeks now. Uh, but I'm going to get the boat set up, get it out. The waves are pretty flat, so it should be a good day. But I'm going to get the cameras set up. And then I'm going to uh, record setting up the boat and uh, get my first bait out. So Aloha, let's do this. All righty. 
Gonna get my first battery in. Get everything set up so that I can get my home programmed in. And then we'll go from there. So once again, I got a table now set up. Try to keep everything up off the ground. I do not want to get sand in this uh, uh, gasket if I can at all avoid it. Let's go ahead and turn my transmitter on. Get the battery in. Get it in there nice and tight. And like I said, even though the waves look uh, fairly mellow, there's a little bit of a break right here. So I got a feeling I'm gonna get tumbled around a little bit. We'll see uh, how well it does. All right, not sure how well you're gonna be able to see the lights out here, but in order to set my GPS home, I just push and hold the GPS on button for five seconds. And once it stops flashing and goes to solid, which it has now done, I'm gonna try and turn it so you can see it, right? I now know that my GPS home has been set. Now, I'm actually gonna put it in the water, and drive it around for a second to see, uh, get my bearings before I put any uh, tackle on it. We'll see what happens. All right, I got control of that. I got control of my steering. And let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on my other camera real quick. This is my Insta360, which thus far has given me some cool panoramic views, but uh, not exactly sure how well it's gonna do in the direct sun like this, so we'll see. By the way, that home setting, if you want it to come back, you press that hold, that same button, that GPS on button or return button for one second, and then the boat will come back right where it was. I think these waves are a little bit bigger than it's rated for, but let's give it a good test, yeah gonna have trouble getting out there I think oh I got over them though all right I'm gonna press and hold the GPS home and see if it comes back it just beeped the waves are just taking it all over the place but it seems to have gotten back <laughs> In a certain way, it got back. You also notice that when it is coming back, all you have to do is pull the trigger or twist the knob and it will uh, immediately turn off the uh, auto return. All right, well, I don't think the uh, conditions are ideal here at all, but we're gonna give it a whirl just the same. And let's just see what happens. First thing I have to do is get one of my rods rigged up. And uh, we're learning this together, folks. Uh, very first time I'm gonna put it out with uh, bait on it. This morning I'm gonna be using Blanche sand fleas. I'm gonna be using my Daiwa rod, my emblem and uh, my saltest 4,000 reels and see 
what we can make it do. Loosen up the drag. Get this down. By the way, this is what I was talking about. You see how this rod or this rig is tangled up. This is what I'm worried about happening inside that bait hopper. And I know that if I leave one of them hanging out, it's gonna get tangled on the main line. So I think this is gonna be a learning curve. Uh, the way, once I get past these initial waves, it's pretty mellow out there. So I'm not super worried about uh, too much of a current, but we'll see. I got my drag set super low. I'm gonna go ahead and get it baited up and uh, give it a whirl. I almost feel like I'm just going to let it drag behind. The only thing I'm going to hook up for this run is the sinker to the bottom of the boat. And uh, that way I don't have to worry about them being tangled up so much because they'll be dragging behind it just like it would be in the normal current. All right. Got to grab my sand fleas. As you can see, I'm optimistic about the day. Got the ice. First cat fish I catch, I'll uh, set up a little slurry. But here are my blanched sand fleas, and I'm going to go ahead and send two out. Although, they're still pretty frozen. And if you saw my previous video, they don't hook up so good when they're frozen. I um, guess I should have taken them out and let them thaw it a little bit more. Let's give them a little bit of a thaw in the water first. Otherwise, they just crunch up and bust. And Oh, look down the beach. There's a guy with a sample rake. I've got mine as well, so I might be able to get some fresh ones. Yeah, there is some grass. For those that are interested, I'm out at Ply Linda today. Uh, it's near the uh, Canaveral National Seash Seashore. And uh, I usually have good luck out here. But man, this wind, this wind has been non-stop. So my hopes aren't up too high. Boy, dipping it in that water thawed them out quick. That's good news. All right. Loosen my drag up a lot. Turn it to C. And I'll lay it down on its side. I can hold that right there. Close this back down. All right, we should be hooked up. Let's see how well this is gonna work. So right off the bat, I see a problem. So let's pull this back over here. Get it up out of the uh, water. I think I'm gonna have to make a loop on my uh, sinker to make this work because I didn't even get to the water and it was tangled. So uh, let's open that up. I think I'm just gonna make a little piece of loop of uh, line and loop it through that. That way it's not actually hooked to the line. So let's do that.
So the whole point of this channel is uh, for folks to learn, and sometimes that means we're going to learn together. Um, I learned a lot from others as I came up fishing. If you know anything about me, I have fished uh, a lot of places. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, by the way, we'll be fishing in uh, Lake Tahoe, up in Northern California. And then in October, we're going offshore tuna fishing in Hawaii. So all of that will be recorded as well and uh, share all of those things. I had promised that you guys are gonna get to see me do a lot of the different fishing that I do. Um, I tried to do some recording of shrimping and uh, that didn't work out so well because none of my cameras do well in low light. Uh, but I'm working on getting another camera and uh, then from there, um, I should be able to do those things with you as well. All right, so I've got a loop there. I'm gonna close the hopper again. Not that I'm even using it. All right. And we are ready to try this again. And right off the bat, that was an improvement. Let's see if I'm hooked up on my pole though. All right, I am not. All right, so far it seems to be going out. I've got some nice size waves coming in, so. Jumps are pretty good though. I can hear my drag pulling out. That makes me happy. Doesn't seem to be too much of a current. Coming back up to my uh, fish finder here. Again, I don't know how well you're gonna see it. I am gonna have to change this up as far as the uh, settings. It looks like it's at about six feet right now, give or take, as far as depth. All right, we're out there a ways. Again, we're still at about six feet. I can see it okay. I don't know if you guys can see it. I am gonna mount a GoPro to the top of it, but probably not today. Um, like I said, today is more about figuring out how to make this work. All right, we are gonna drop the bait. and push and hold the return home. It beeped, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Again, if something start, weird starts happening when it's on autopilot, you just pull the trigger or twist the knob and it will, uh, you will have control over it again. But I can see it, it just turned around. It actually made a big loop. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, um, but it is trying to make its way back in. If it makes it back in, we will have casted our very first bait. Now, because I'm goofing with the camera, or with the, uh, the boat, forgot all about my rod, the reel. I'm going to set that drag a little better. The boat is making its way back. This is cool, guys. I'm excited. Now, I will tell you, there are, there are much better days than this, especially out here. It's normally really, really calm. Um, but I figure it just took a good, it went out over two and a half, three foot waves pretty handily. So I'm not super uh, concerned. But I am going to get up here and catch it so it doesn't drive itself into the beach. 
But based on what I'm seeing right now, we have just had our very first successful long distance cast. It's still pulling up. Pull the trigger, it quits running. And uh, we've casted our first with the fishing surfer. And so far, so good. A couple of things I have decided to do. Um, I did buy a little spray bottle uh, with fresh water in it. But uh, my memory being what it is, I forgot it. But one of the first things I'm gonna do each time it comes back, is I'm gonna use fresh water uh, to rinse off all the exposed metal and the props. Don't know if it's required, just feels like something I should do. Maybe extend the uh, anti-rust capabilities of the metal components. All right, so we've casted our first Pompano rig out there. <clears throat> If you look right there, I also have a deep rod uh, that I plan on using. Um, I've got an underwater camera. I'm gonna cast out a couple of times. If that works out, you're gonna see that, that footage later in the video. Um, but that long pole, if, uh, if I get more comfortable with the surfer, and maybe these waves mellow out a little bit, um, I might send a bait out far, um, something a little bigger than sand, please. Oh, look, I've already got a bite. I have already got a bite. Here we go. Here we go. For sure got a bite. All right. I think I got a lot of extra line out there, though. But uh, some, whatever is on it is shaking. Boy, this would be awesome. If we were to show up with a pompano right now, that would make my day. If it is, it ain't a very big one. But uh, it is definitely a fish of some kind. We have life. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast out this other rod here in a few, uh, just like I normally would, see if there's any difference. Yeah, I don't know. This is a strange little fish, whatever it is. It ain't very big. Uh, but it's uh, starting to pull. Oh, it just jumped. What do we got here? We got a little blue fish or a lady fish? What is it? It didn't run up the beach, so I don't, I'm not thinking Pompano. Oh, it started to run up the beach just now. Oh, it looks like a ladyfish. Boy, do I not like touching them. But it's a good size ladyfish. Wow. And it's self-released, which is makes me very happy. But there is the first fish caught on the fishing RC fishing surfer. Definitely not the target species, but uh at least we know that it works. Let's get this smelly doggone thing back up in the water. I mean, that's a good size ladyfish. If you'll let me grab you, I'll put you home. All right. There we go. Oh, super, super smelly, stinky fish. Goodness, goodness, goodness. All right. Well, both sand fleas are gone. And I don't think that is because uh, that fish ate them. Um, it's very likely because they were still frozen. I'm gonna check my line and see if there's any uh, rough spots. I don't, not that I expect a ladyfish to have bit it. And let's do this again. Although this time, once it's out there where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and set a spot so that we can test the auto drive out. Yeah, this wind, y'all. This wind. Sure taking the fun out of it for me. All right. Another thing, I think I'm gonna put 
some fish bites on it this time. I have fish gum and I have fish bites. But this time I'm going to put some fish bites on it. And let my sand fleas thaw for a little while. See if that doesn't uh, improve things for me as far as them staying on. Now, when I use fish bites, I like to cut them into a little diamond shape. I don't know if the shape makes any difference whatsoever, to be honest with you, but uh, you know, most of the lures and fishing equipment we buy are better at catching us than uh, catching fish, so I don't know if it really has anything to do um, with that. But I'm also going to put one more sand flea on this and use a little piece of... Uh, fish bite to hold it on. We'll see if it stays on better. Although I forgot to thaw this one, so it's completely frozen solid. And I got it through there without breaking it up too bad. But I don't know if the mic is picking it up, but every time I touch them, you can hear them crunching. And that's not ideal. Now, I didn't even get to uh, wipe this thing down. Um, one of the weird things about this is it has, you have to open it and disconnect the battery uh, to turn it off. Um, and that's not ideal. For me, anyway, it's not ideal. Um, if there was a way that I could um, all right just started my first uh, issue it looks like this switch has turned inside there a little bit but I got it fixed and uh, let's uh, go put it back out Keeping an eye on my line because it wraps around the back of the rod. You can hear my drag. Try and give it a second to maybe be less wavy for when I launch it back out. Let's go. Probably better to be right behind it so that you hit the uh, the waves at a better angle instead of uh because if it's crossed up at all it's going to flip the boat. But once you get out past those breakers, it seems to go ahead and take off. I'm trying to stand uh, directly behind it so I can try to keep my nose uh, into the waves. Uh, but they, these waves are big enough that um, I lose sight of the boat when they're right here. So I having to uh, having to do a lot of correcting. All right, this one's gone out significantly further than the first one. See if I can walk up the beach and get a better view of it. I can, it is. Mine's still going out. Seems to be pretty straight. All right. Gonna push and hold the mark button. I 
I have now released the bait. Push and hold my home button. It beeped and it should be returning. This time I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna go ahead and reset my drag. Take my slack out. Well, there wasn't a lot of slack in it. Looks like I had bumped the controller because it stopped coming back, uh, but I just reset it again. And it's on its way. I noticed there for a second it had just sort of stopped moving. Um, which is cool. It's not like it kept driving off into the sunset, it just stopped moving. So I'm holding it, you can see, if you put your finger near that, any bump of that trigger uh, results in it the return to home canceling. I assume that's so once it starts getting close or if it was to get stuck in a current or something like that and it was running away from you, you might be able to get a hold of it and uh, bring it back yourself. Um, I have read that it, uh, it's sometimes better uh, to uh, use to drive it back. And I assume it's times just like this where you see it's having trouble. It's gonna keep getting wiped out and it's not the boat's fault. I'm using this in ways that are basically too big for it. But I'm gonna pull the trigger and recover it. Now, some advice that I will give you, because I've already started making this mistake, you get all worked up in the gadgets and the fun of this thing, and uh, you forget that you're fishing. <laughs> and uh, that's not a good thing. All right, I'm gonna lay it on its side so that I can rinse everything off. All right, there's some inter something interesting is happening here. It appears to be getting a signal from somewhere. So that makes me wonder if there's water in this boat. So uh, I am going to go ahead and pull out my towel, wipe it down. But yep, yeah, uh, the motors are spinning on their own right now. Um, so we're gonna see if that is what has happened. It was getting tossed around pretty good out there, but it is sealed, supposedly. So we will see. Open that one. Open that one. And there is definitely water in this boat, and it's not a little bit. There is a lot of water in this boat. So first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery, get the battery out of there. And the unfortunate part is that's salt water. Um, and it's not like I can rinse this thing out. Um, but I'm gonna turn it upside down. Yeah, it was full of water. So I will have to be calling um, I'm not sure where that water came in at, but uh, that's a bummer. I had really high hopes for this, but I mean, it is completely full of water. And that was be the end of the RC Fishing Surfer. Um, hopefully the fact that I uh, Hopefully the fact that I had sprayed everything down really well with Corrosion X, it'll be all right. But uh, 
Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, that's a big bummer. Um, not sure what else to say. Other than that's a bummer. All right, well, caught one fish on it. They came back and it was full of water. Um, once I get back and I can uh, dig around in there, um, we'll see what we can do with it. But um, yeah, very disappointed. Very, very disappointed.